Yo, what's going on, peeps? This your boy, Mr. John Duncan, aka LT. Um, you're here again because we got another interview about to go on. Gerald Bonner from Bonfire Radio. About to get a quick scoop, real quick, about another you know, radio station and let artists know that they can send them music and um, put it in rotation. So, tune in. About to go down. Well, let me ask you something, because you touched on it, I guess, the type of thing that you actually listen to, and I noticed, too, with the website um, at the radio station, it's not strictly, like, Christian hip-hop, and, um, and or Christian music, or gospel music, period, because I know one time I seen, like, some Black Eyed Peas up there, you know, you have a very like, a diverse place set, you know, like, you can hear some Marvin Sapp, some some R. Swift, or some K-Drama, and then it's different things, I guess you have di different segments, so... How was that, was that really, I guess, part of the original plan, or how, was, how did that come along to, to have that? Because you don't see that anywhere, really. Right, I think, I think my original plan, uh, the tagline for our uh, radio station is radio the way it's supposed to be. And the idea of it is this, uh, most radio, or really if we just look at what we call Christian music, most of it is vertical in nature, meaning that it just addresses things with God the Father. So, you know, you get a lot of worship music in there, and even with our uh, hip-hop music, a lot of it, you know, is very scriptural, and talks about the things of God and things like that, and that's great. Uh, the only issue with that is we still live in a world where we have to deal with people. Uh -huh. And the problem with, unfortunately, most Christian music is it does not address interpersonal relationships. Uh, so there, you can probably pick a song or two, you know, I'm thinking like right now of Joy Marshall and Canton Jones, 9 to 5, you know, when you're just talking about how to deal with things at your job. And there are some, some, you know, specialty songs like that. But there aren't really a, a lot, there's not a lot of music that addresses those types of issues. So truth be told, you know, it doesn't really matter who gives the message as long as the message comes forth. So, you know, Christians deal with marriage issues. You know, the, the divorce rate is worse in the church than it is in the world. Yeah. So uh, a lot of it has to do with seeds that has or have not been sown. So I think musically, you need to have something that addresses all of these issues. So whether it's a fun song, you know, like um, I Got a Feeling from Black Eyed Peas, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that song. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an exciting party song, and a lot of us feel that same way. You know, after you get that great paycheck or, you know, you get a great blessing or whatever <laughs> it is, you, you feel like tonight's going to be a great night. Uh -huh. You know, so you need a song to say that. Or, or, you know, even if we play a song called Break Up Radio, which uh, is from a young lady named Kelly Nicole, who actually wrote Deja Vu for Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And um, that song simply talks about, you know, I was in a bad relationship, and I'm really not sure how I want to end it, so I'm going to break up on radio, which a lot of people may or may not understand, but you felt that way. You know, whether it's P.J. Morton with The One, and, uh, you know, everybody, saved, unsaved, whatever, you're looking for somebody to spend the rest of your life with. As a man, you look at a woman, and you, you try to figure out what's going on with her, and you think, well, this one might be The One. We don't have a lot of songs in, in Christian music that address that, and so... My thought is to really bring the entire life experience to life on radio. So we deal with everything. We deal with worship. We deal with uh, interpersonal relationships. We deal with family. We deal with education. We deal with romance. We deal with all of it because all of it is a part of life. Amen. That's, that's great. That's definitely an eye-opener how you actually said that. Well, let me ask you, have you ever caught any backlash behind that? You know, the funny part, I kind of prepared myself to. Uh -huh. And our audience absolutely loves what we do. Really? Uh, I had, I've had only really one person actually come to me and ask me, you know, we were playing Halo from Beyonce, and, you know, they were asking me, well, why are you playing that? I researched the lyrics, and that has nothing to do with love for the Father. And I said, well, that's fine, you know, but it does deal with finding, you know, love for somebody else, and are you saying that that's not a part of life? I mean, absolutely it's a part of life. And uh, I feel like this. I would rather take music to address the situation and stop something bad from happening than for us to continue to solely participate with vertical music and until all of our horizontal relationships totally die. Yeah. You know, we were put here to love, you know, it's funny, Israel's new album is titled Love God, 
love people. I believe that's the mandate of the entire body of Christ, to love God and to love our people. We're doing a fairly decent job of learning how to love God, but we're not doing so hot when it comes to loving people. So we just need to be able to sow seeds into each other's lives that would help us deal with people in a much better way. So that's kind of the idea behind it. I did catch some, um, some work that upset with me, actually. I played Chris Brown, Crawl, uh-huh. which if you ever listen to that song, that song can be taken so many ways. It speaks to, you know, just really needing to crawl back to love. And it can easily be taken as a worship song, you know, crawling back to the Father. Or just very simply, if you're in a relationship and you want to connect back and, you know, you don't feel like you're worthy to be in a relationship, how many guys have felt like that? How many women have felt like that? Yeah. You know, so I think that sometimes uh, people, we, get, we spiritualize things too much. So someone got mad at me for playing Chris Brown because, you know, he, he, because of what has happened with Chris Brown, but the reality of it is, again, the challenge was this, as a believer, that particular song is a comeback song on a lot of fronts. Uh-huh. You know, he, of course, he released it after the issue with Rihanna, and if anybody should be the first to be willing to forgive and restore, it's us. Yeah. We should be the charge on that. You know, we shouldn't be the ones debating whether or not his performance you know, on, on the BET Awards was real or fake or his tears real. Who cares about that? Mm-hmm. Our job, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We're supposed to bring people back to him and, and forgive and restore. So for me, I'm prepared for the backlash, but the truth of it is there has to been a lot of it because people at the end of the day realize these are all issues that are going to really impact people. You know, think Michael Jackson, for instance, which we play a lot. Michael Jackson, and we love Michael Jackson, but when you really listen to what he was saying, you know, a song like Man in the Mirror, which interestingly enough was uh, covered by the Williams Brothers, was accepted on Christian radio because the Williams Brothers sung it. They didn't change one word, they didn't change one melody, so which makes it more authentic? Is it more authentic because the Williams Brothers sing it or because Michael Jackson sings it? I think the song is the thing that makes it authentic. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and that was kind of like why I actually asked that question too, just touching back on some of the stuff that you said, that I know that uh, us Christians <laughs> can sometimes be the most judgmental characters in this world, you know, and that goes back to what you're saying about loving your neighbors, and sometimes I feel like that's what we really need to work on, stop being so judgmental, and stop being so religious all the time, you know, it's, it's like, like you're looking for something, um, you're looking for danger, you, you, you're looking for negativity, you're looking for something that's not of God. And they, like they said, if you look for something, eventually you'll find it, because you'll make something out of, you'll make something out of nothing. And, and truthfully, that Chris Brown song, The Crawl, that's probably like one of my favorite like Chris Brown songs, because, because you, kinda, you know what he went through, and that, like you said, that's like a resurrection song because it is so powerful and you can look at songs in so many different ways. So, like I said, I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing, man, and, and I like what you're doing. Um, Thank you. And I guess just to um, kind of throw something in for the for the Christian hip-hop artists, um, yeah. you're kind of saying that the song really has to have like some kind of a, a meaning to it, something that we can really relate to what was going on in this day and time. So. If a Christian hip hop artist submits to you their music, if there were real intense process around that particular song that they sent in, is it going to be a group of people like listening to see, okay, is this something that's really good for our, our radio, or what do you really judge? Are you judging the content, the quality of the song, the production? What's the main thing that you actually look at that's going to say, okay, I'm going to play this record? I look at all of the above. Um, you know, I really feel like. Any song that's submitted, no matter the genre, but if we're specifically speaking to hip hop, uh, it needs to first of all be produced in a quality format. Um, You know, we are putting this song up against any other song in our playlist. And so when you're looking at production quality, from anyone from Kirk Franklin to Toby Mac to Will Smith to Michael Jackson, you know, your, your, your production quality has to match up to that. Uh, it obviously has to have a great message to it, you know, and we are not, uh, we, we are not big sticklers on, you know, well, is it, uh, is it scripturally sound, if, you know, people want to exegete and all that type of stuff, you know, what are you saying? I think that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, keep it really, really simple, you know, and we have played a wide variety of, of, of great music that, you know, we're not stuck to a particular format. You know, we have aired music from all sorts of folks. The Truth, Apple Jacks, um, you name it. K-Drama, we've got some of his new stuff. 
stuff there right now. Trip Lee, McCoy, all of those guys who I love. I'm a huge fan of hip hop. And I have to say that I love being able to have a show where I have the autonomy to infuse hip hop and play it right alongside your Fred Hammond and your Kirk Franklin. Because I believe for a long time, music from all of these great artists should be showcased in a major way. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's tell the truth. Anytime that a Trip Lee can outsell Marvin Sapp on Trip Lee's first week out and knock Marvin Sapp off the charts, mm -hmm. that's a major accomplishment to do that without the help of gospel radio or anything like that. It says that hip hop is a viable, viable genre. People are buying, people are listening, and I think it's a great thing. Yeah. So for me to play it, uh, it's really simple. It has to be quality, you know, and um, there are still a lot of folks who don't take the time to produce uh, a good track. You know, they, they don't have enough ears listening to it. I would just say, you know, it, it could not be played up against what Drake is doing, up against what, you know, any of the other mainstream artists, Eminem or any of that. If it can't be played up against that, then go back into the lab and work on it some more. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to embarrass anybody, and we would never do that. But I just think that sometimes, you know, if you have a craft and you really say, and you just give me two minutes on this, um, a lot of times, hip hop in particular, uh, people want to say that God has called them to it. Well, anything that I believe that God has called you to, you will take the time to study your craft and present it in an excellent manner. Yeah. Um, you know, you really can't say that God called you to do something, you know, and you don't take time producing it, you don't take time to write lyrics that are going to really reach people. Your delivery is way off. I mean, you know, if I dare to ask you to spit 16 bars, you couldn't. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those are things you really got to consider if you're going to submit your music uh, to anybody, to anybody. But uh, for me, does it sound good? Does it, does it resonate with listeners? Does it make sense? Um, if it does, we'll play it. It's really simple. Yeah, man, I think you just gave them some real good game, man. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. Hip-hop, you know, we were talking before before this started, and hip-hop um, has still is still considered underground. Yeah. And if you consider, you know, hip-hop as a genre uh, is about 30 or 40 years old. You know, if you go back to the days of Africa, Bavada, and, and all those guys. And when you start looking at what we call Christian hip-hop, holy hip-hop or whatever, that's running about mm, 20, 25 years old. So you still got a significant situation that's happening. Um, and the question now is, after 25 years, why isn't the genre taken seriously by mainstream? Mm -hmm. And that's a question we could spend forever talking about. Oh, yeah. But I would just say, you know, the simple answer is, you have to produce a quality product and be willing to get it out there. And once you do that, you know, the right people will get behind it. I love holy hip hop. Love it, love it, love it. And if we can just get more of it if that's produced in a quality manner, I got no problem playing it. And what I love is our listeners are uh, very influential listeners. They actually go buy music. Yeah. <laughs> listeners that you want. Um, so by all means, we would love to play your stuff. If you want to submit it to us, Email us, info at getbonerfied.com. That's the email address, info at getbonerfied.com. All we require is the track and an artist bio so that when we introduce it to, your, to our listeners, we can give them some history and some background and set you up in a really good way.